What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the Heat Blizzard Strayer build. This build is all about dealing heat damage and building off our damage from heat. This is all thanks to the new arcane Cascadia Flare. What this does is basically give you base damage when you proc the heat status effect. And once your heat DOTs run out, you do lose the damage. So it does not stack up like the other arcanes, like Merciless, Dexterity, and so on. And it's easily refreshable just by proccing the heat status effect. For example, if we want some base damage, we just have to proc the heat status effect. As you see right there, Cascadia Flare has been procced. I stacked it up to 432%. The more you shoot, it builds up all the way to 480%, where it caps out. And you get this base damage if you yourself inflict this heat status effect. And it can come from any source, from your companion, from your Warframe, or even your other weapons. For example, here, I just shot the Kuva Ogress. I filled up my stack really quickly. And I switched to my secondary, and I get the full benefits. As you can see right there, it keeps on refreshing. Warframes like Ember, using her fourth ability, her third ability, or even Gauss's Thermal Sunder can help you stack up this arcane fairly easily. As you can see right there, I got the full benefits just from casting abilities. Even frames like Neja with his Firewalker and his second ability. But there's another frame that is also very good for this. For example, Zephyr. If you don't know, Zephyr's fourth ability, Tornadoes, actually distribute the damage. Cast your Tornadoes. There you go. It will constantly keep refreshing itself because all the Tornadoes now deal heat damage. Very powerful combo, but we've done a lot of Zephyr synergies, and, and plus Zephyr is just, just so broken. We'll stick to Frost and Vault for this showcase. And if you want to see more on this Zephyr build, do go check out my Zephyr build guide, where I explain a lot more in detail. And you can also utilize this synergy with her as well. Now, what if you don't want to shoot with your secondary to build up the base damage? Well, you can use other weapons for that. One shot of the Ogress, and we fully built up our base damage. This is where I'll be using my Kuva Ogress as a stat stick to proc the heat status effect. And my main damaging weapon can be any secondary with the Cascadia Flare Arcane. But why is Frost used here? Well, for one thing, crowd control and his augment, Biting Frost. Pretty much, you gain 200% crit chance and crit damage when enemies are frozen. And this applies to all your weapons. As long as the enemy is frozen, you deal increased crits to them. So, we group them up, proc arcane, and shoot. But what happens when we build up our crits even more? Pretty damn good. But that's not all that happens in the synergy. Why am I switching between weapons? Well, I can just use my secondary to build it up. Not only are we using the Ogress to build up the heat stacks, but it is for another damage increasing synergy. First, let me explain how heat works. Heat is a unique damage over time effect that persists for six seconds. Basically, all heat stacks are considered as one instance of damage and do not decay individually, like toxin, bleed, or electric. So when a heat dot runs out, all stacks disappear. If you apply more heat, you refresh the entire stack. All heat damage will scale off the weapon's base damage, heat percentage, and faction damage multipliers you have equipped on the weapon. And you can add damage multipliers from other sources of heat to the current stack to increase its damage effectiveness. And this is where I'll be using the mechanic called Heat Inherent with this loadout, where I combine two different sources of heat multipliers to make the heat stack stronger to destroy the enemy. Granted, the first heat stack does not decay before you apply the new one. And what makes Kuva Ogres really great for hordes of enemies is because of its augment, Nightwatch Napalm. Normally, without the augment, if you shoot the Kuva Ogress, it, it, it does nothing. It's just some useless AoE explosion that does nothing. 
But if you equip the Nightwatch Napalm mod, it will leave a patch of fire to your shots. Look at that. And this Ogwin will deal 30% of that damage, which is pretty damn good. And the heat damage that this mod does will scale off the heat percentage that you equip, which pairs really well with heat inherent loadouts. All right, let me show you how this works. When I shoot my Kuva Ogres, I will apply heat thanks to the Nightwatch Napalm, and that heat will scale off the heat mods and other multipliers equipped on the weapon. As long as you have one stack of heat, you can add on to that heat with another weapon. And here I'm doing that with my secondary. Combining two multipliers from two different weapons can increase the heat damage output. To keep it simple, I have a weapon with decently high heat percentage and a faction damage multiplier. Use that to apply the initial heat stacks and then use my secondary or melee, whichever it is, with its own multipliers along with the matching faction damage mod to add on to the heat stacks. Now, both of those multipliers combined will increase the heat stack damage output. That's pretty much heat inherent. All right, now that you know a little bit of how this setup works, let's take a look at the first build. And this is Frost in the aura, refresh spine for the energy to shield conversion. You spend some energy, get shields back. This is going to be one of our main sources of survivability. And this is going to be paired up with the auger mods just to give us even more shields. Prime sure footed for the knockdown and stagger resistance. Spending less time in your butt is a huge DPS increase. You don't need power strength on this build at all. It is just here for crowd control and freezing enemies. Range is at 220% thanks to rolling guard and auger reach. I went with auger reach instead of stretch just for the auger set bonus for the shield regen because I'm also going to be using streamline for efficiency. It is going to be a spammy build. Prime flow for the large energy pool. Equilibrium will convert health orbs to energy and energy to health orbs. Natural Thailand for the increase in casting speed, and of course, the Augment Biting Frost, giving you that crit increase. Now, this crit increase is not a flat increase. It is going to be additive to your modded crits. Arcane Eruption is an insane crowd controlling <laughs> arcane. Pick up an energy orb, and you have a 100% chance to knock down enemies within a 30 meter radius. Very damn powerful. And the helmet ability I went on this Frost build is Ensnare to group up enemies so it'll be easier to proc them with the heat AoE. All right, let's take a look at the Kuva Ogres build. A Kuva Ogres is bonus toxin. So as I put heat on here, I will get gas. But thanks to the Nightwatch Napalm mod, I will still be doing heat damage. And the heat damage that the Nightwatch Napalm does will scale off all the other multipliers and the heat percentage you have equipped on the weapon. I went for some fire rate, multi-shot, your faction mod, prime firestorm to increase the blast radius, and some status duration and of course the utility here twitch for the holster speed and dexterity for even more holster speed and the secondary can be your gaze kit gun can be your tenet cycron the athadai pretty much anything as long as you have heat or it has innate heat Let's take a look at our Tenet Cycron here, for example. It has bonus magnetic. So now I can have viral, magnetic, and heat. The viral weighting will be a lot lower because we want our heat to be our main source of damage. And this is the build. Cascadia Flare is, of course, going to be our base damage. So we don't need to mod for base damage. Hornet Strike is not needed. Cascadia Flare is double the effect of Hornet Strike. And Hornet Strike will be additive to Cascadia Flare. So there's just no point. Crit chance, crit damage, faction damage multiplier to multiply all of our outgoing damage multi-shot galvanized shots to increase the status chance and a condition overload pretty much more unique status effects on a target will give you more base damage and yes this will be additive to cascadia flare as well however it gives us more damage output because of the unique status effects that are going to be on the enemy and here the viral weighting is lower because we want our heat to overshadow the viral and since this is a beam we're going to be capping the viral stacks really quickly reflex draw for increased swap speed as well so i can swap between my weapons even better and this allows me to not mod for vigorous swap or speed holster on my warframe and you can use any melee to kill the acolytes whether it be a glaive or anything modded for high corrosive and here checking out our second secondary the gaze kit gun it is built from the gaze chamber haymaker grip and splat loader it is high in crit and base damage the builds pretty much the same thing but now we have the additional arcane Pack 
next charge here turns this weapon into a battery so you don't have to reload and have to worry about running out of ammo if you're taking this into a longer run you can however switch this out for pretty much any other arcane you want i did use this loadout with my disruption vault build for heat inherit this vault is running shuriken with its augment to strip armor because i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not good at using the vastlock spam da, 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 to strip armor really quickly on the demolist so i opted for a lazier way to do it and that's just putting on shuriken on vault Volt's main shtick here is giving himself his electric shield for the increase in crits, and it gives you electric damage, which is separate from your modded elements. And here I used Phantasma as my heat and viral applier. So how this works is I can use this weapon to proc viral and heat, and that heat is multiplied by the faction mod and everything else, and use kit gun here. As you notice, I changed the mods. I removed all the viral from this weapon and added lethal torrent for increased fire rate and multi-shot and anemic agility for even more multi-shot. So let's see how this works. We got our shield. Completely destroys them. All right, let's take a look at the Volt build. In the aura, I have enemy radar for the, of course, it, an enemy, enemy radar. You know what this mod does. You know what this mod does. You know the combo with equilibrium. Duration is 179%. This is gonna be so useful for Shuriken, giving you 14 seconds at least, and a decent amount of shield uptime. Seeking Shuriken allows you to strip armor, and you need 140% power strength for that juicy 100%. Vigor Swamp just gives you that holster speed and increased base damage. Here, I went with Precision for even more base damage. So as long as you hit that headshot, you gain increased base damage on your secondary which stacks up with cascadia flare and i can do that same thing with the athodai and this is the athodai loadout that i'll be experimenting with because i really want to take this out for a spin you know what i'll probably remove galvanized crosshairs here for gunslinger for even more fire rate gotta have that fire rate in there so we can get this thing started Whew. That's actually not bad. Gotta get those headshots for the passive. I didn't even need armor strip there. Damn. That guy just exploded. So anyway, thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out. If you did enjoy and learn something from this video, please do feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always always let's kill this dude right here wait i drew that wait, wait. peace peace